Hello YouTube, bringing you a new video mm -hmm. um, by popular request on the free energy video that I made. Everyone loved it. Um, you guys really wanted to see a hoverboard, so I said, well that was easy, let's make one. Okay, so we'll start with the hoverboard here, okay, the base plate for it, and you're going to need the um, gravity ion retardigator. They're pretty easy to come by. Not very hard to find. Get them at any old Radio Shack or Best Buy. Just ask the manager. You want to make this so it's the gravity ion retardigator. It's exactly one foot from the epicenter. Otherwise, it will not use the moon's gravitation to float you. So you want to keep this at one foot from each side and use your quantum arc welder to secure it in place. This might be the most expensive thing that you might want to buy is quantum arc weld. It is probably forty-five hundred dollars a f square foot. Just get that on there. Okay. I think we're good there. Okay. Now let's get the foot pads here. Can't remember the name. The centrifugal ion manipulators. They'll make sure that every atom in your body is channeled by ions through the gravity ion retardigator. Otherwise, it'll probably suck you through the center of the earth and probably boil you alive. But it's fine. Okay, now the tricky part is attaching these. Okay. Now let's secure these to the board. Okay. Quantum adhesive duct tape. Only issued by the FBI. Quite rare to get. Good luck finding it. And after this, we'll be using Euler's method to repel gravity. Interesting stuff. Okay. Now when we're ready, we'll begin with the motherboard. Okay, guys. I've duct taped this all up. And we're ready to add the motherboard. Now before you add the motherboard, you'll have to program it with the descriptionalizer. Okay. Now you're going to want to take your fire wire and you're going to want to plug it in to the UCSB cord adapter and plug it into... Can you zoom in here? Thanks, Dewey. Okay. Now you'll see this plug right here. You're going to want to attach it in to the far point. Anything past that will cause extreme damage to your urinary tract. don't want to know how. I'm just going to explain that. Okay. You're going to want to duct, that, duct tape that very securely. Because if that comes loose, you're going to be peeing blood. Okay. Now, 
Let me show you on this. There's one component that we won't need. We can just rip off, and that's this capacitor right here. It just blocks too much of the current. Rip it off, okay. We're good to go. Now when you program it, you want to make sure that the program is quite sequential. And if it's not, then it's going to cause major failure. Okay, it's programmed. I hope you caught that. Now, we can unplug it. It's programmed on there. Okay. And you need your gravitation ion retardigator. And you'll plug it in where that capacitor was that you just ripped off. And of course you'll need a duct tape. Okay. Now the history of the hoverboard is actually quite interesting. Believe it or not, this is not the first one in existence. On many conspiracy forums on the interweb, it is said that the first one was the one from Back to the Future. Now I know there's haters out there who would say that's fake and gay. But I say it's real because I made it. Believe it or not. You can watch that film again. If you look closely, you can see my initials scratched in the very front of it. Okay. Now we're going to want to secure this down very tightly. Okay. Make sure it doesn't come off or that will result in explosions which are sometimes bad. Okay. Now we're done with that. Now we need the Right here, atmospheric calibration selector. Very important. Need to duct tape this on. Now, this selects the right, the right atmospheric pressure so that the wind will push up on the board the wind will actually be controlled depending on the settings you select and it will bring scents from all different animals and it will collect them in a uniform gravitation swelling as one might call and push up. Now a board like this will not work in anywhere that is not inhabited by animals because you cannot get those animal scents that are required we're good here okay now we don't need this next the barometer controller instigator what you'll do can you zoom in here You're going to need to set it to the right setting. The frequency needs to match the motherboard so that when you set it, it'll calibrate itself. So you want to start by turning it on. And you might hear a noise. It's quite loud. You're going to do adjust it to the right frequency. You can hear it from here, and you can hear it from here also. And you want to get a, a low tone. There we go. Okay, now we're calibrated. We're going to shut that down. Okay. And next, we've got the... We need to put in the crystals. Crystals over here. Okay.
you'll take the crystal, very important, it's made out of pure meth, and you're going to want to tape it to the motherboard. It's sort of like a resistor, and by resisting, I mean it resists the temptation to explode. That should be well put. Okay. Now, last but not least, we've got the, uh, let's see here. We've got the rotational, gravitational, expectational, retardational thing that you'll need almost looks like a motor but it isn't it's what I just said it was which I don't remember what I said okay we're gonna plug it in and you can see it'll work we're gonna take it out now we're gonna take the jalopian stabilizer these are easy to come by you can find them anywhere from Guatemala to Cuba, just ask around for Che Guevara and he'll hook you up. Okay, you're gonna take your quantum arc welder and you're gonna arc weld it on. And while that sits, we'll go through a bit of history about the hoverboard. So, back in the 18th century, the very, very first hoverboard before the Back to the Future was actually made by none other than Abraham Lincoln himself, who was also a vampire hunter. And he used one of these as sort of his getaway vehicle from when he was mass hoarded by werewolves and vampires. And it was actually very fast. And back then, it was commonly referred to as a witch's broom. And let's see, before that, there was a similar type of technology used by the Gua'uld, which actually made their staff weapons work. <laughs>